Here we go. Step one. We're going to start up right over here. Gotcha, Kiari. So we'll talk about that. I got you, Veronica. Sounds good. So here, we go to the beginning here, and that's going to be actually the end. What percent of your earnings goes towards bills? Sounds good. That's what I care about. We want to know the percent that represents your bills. So let's go ahead and let's get that right over here. Sorry about that, gang. So here we have blank percent, and that goes towards your bills. That's what you're trying to find, the percent that represents your bills. Now, my party people, there is a formula for percentages. Would anybody here kindly remind me what that formula is? What is the formula that we try to use for percentages, for basic percentages? Sure, yeah, this could absolutely be solved with a proportion too. I actually did a class on this, so you're good. Michaela, close. Percent times the original equals what? Yeah, there we go, arrows. Yep, exactly, Michaela. Yep, the percent multiplied by the original equals the result. So let's go ahead and get that formula in right here. Let me get this just a little bigger. There we go. So here's your formula. Your percent multiplied by your original amount is your result. And here's a very big piece of information for when you are tackling this formula. Let me go ahead and highlight this here. And highlight this here. Basically, everybody, here's the cool thing about percentages. The percent and the result, they represent the same thing. They're just different forms. The percent is the form of a percent, but the result could be whatever it is that you're talking about. Here, we're talking about money. So the percent that represents your bills in this formula is gonna also be the result that represents the amount that your bills represent. So let me write this down for you. So you can just copy this here. The percent you apply, the percent you apply is the result you get. One of the most engaging and fun to use resources that I offer is gonna be my arithmetic reasoning progress dashboard. Imagine being able to track your progress concept by concept, like proportions, distance rate time problems, systems of equations. Imagine being able to guarantee that by the end of it all, you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. That's how our progress dashboard works to give you the ultimate resource to make sure that your confidence is exactly where it's supposed to be. So check that out in our full program and let's ace the ASVAD. So there we go, right there. Feel free to write that down. That's gonna be your, your biggest takeaway from this right here, especially if you were any sort of nervous. The percent you apply is the result you get. So Nikayla, yeah, essentially. This can, be, this can be applied, I mean, there's a shortcut to it, but you can apply this when it comes to simple and compound interest, taxes and discounts. Every single percentage problem that on the ASVAB, on the ASVAB will use that formula. When you're learning simple and compound interest, you know, slightly more advanced topics, this still applies, but there's a shortcut that you can use, and it's a different formula that pretty much saves you time. But to answer your question simply, yes. Every percentage question that you're going to be dealing with is an iteration of this simple formula. Yeah. So with that, here we go, my party people. Here's how this formula is gonna make sense. Again, the percent and the result need to represent the same idea. So in this case, because we're looking for the percent that represents your bills, everyone, when we plug in the result, we need to plug in what represents the bills. That's what we have to do. So right over here, let's check out the information. We put this amount right here towards bills. And so the percent that represents bills, that's what it'll be. So we'll say P percent times the original equals, what's the amount that we're gonna plug in everybody? What's the amount we'll plug in? That's right, 
4,914. Be careful not to switch any numbers around. 4914, not 4194. Be careful. So there we have that. And everyone, what's going to represent the original amount? Remember, the original amount is what represents the whole thing. What represents the whole thing here? Yeah, 100%, but the amount that represents the whole thing is the 11,700. So we have that right over here. So that's our original amount. And so we'll plug that right in. 11,700. Solve this formula and we are done. The hardest part about practicing for the ASVAB, in my opinion, is knowing when you're ready. Knowing that you are good to go and move on from this topic, and that's why our full program has a progress dashboard, letting you know exactly what you're good at and what you need to work on. And the great thing is, you can join our full program for free for a full week, no credit card required. That's our trial that's available for you. So go ahead and text TRIAL to 833-321-0182, or click the link in the description of this video to get started and have yourself a good time. Go ahead and do it, my ASVAB party people. I'll see you in there. Everyone, what's the one move we need to make here? What's the one thing we need to do? Jared, that's right. Divide both sides by 11,700 and we're good. Divide both sides by that and we are good. So we'll go ahead and do that here. And we'll do that here. Great. So it's gonna cancel out here on the left side. So P as a percent is going to equal 49.14 divided by 11,700. And so if you're looking at that, well, my party people, if you're nervous or anxious, then this is telling me that you are nervous about dealing with division with large numbers or dealing with division that results in a decimal. Again, that's the math basics course. That takes care of all of that. But here we go. We'll go ahead and do it here. 11,700. Divide it into, let's not get the wrong number, 49.14. And we'll go ahead and put a decimal with some zeros just in case. So we take a look here. 11,700 can't go into 4, can't go into 49, can't go into 491, can't even go into 4,700 and, or 4,914. So we have to go over here. We have to treat this like, 49,140. Everyone, if you had to take a guess, how many times do you think or suppose 11,700 might go into 4,000 or 49,140? Jared, Jalen, Delilah, all saying four times? Yeah, you'd be correct. If you look, if you look at all these answer choices, they all start with four. So four is going to be a pretty good way to get started here. So I'll go ahead and start with four. So from there, we'll just see what that's gonna be. We'll multiply by four. So we have four times zero, four times zero, seven times four, one times four plus the two, one times four, and there we have it, 46,800. So that's what I'll subtract. Four, six, eight, zero, zero. We subtract that, we get zero. Four, we'll go ahead and borrow. That'll be three and two. So we have 2,340 remaining. Now we'll continue bringing down the next zero. Everyone, how many times do we think 11,700 might go into that number? I think it might go in twice. Sweet. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. 11,700 times two. That'll be two times zero, two times zero, two times four is 14. One times two is two, carry the one is three, and then one times two is two. Take a look, boom, exactly it. It fits perfectly, we'll plug in that two, and that's gonna give us a clean 0 0.42, and there we are. Everyone. This answer is in decimal form. What do we do to work backwards to turn a decimal back to a percent? Yep, we multiply by 100. So essentially, that would be 42%.
And that's why C is the correct answer. And on the off chance that you didn't know, we have a free class actually once a week. We have three classes total, but I would love to have you in at least a free class. That way I can give you that momentum, that confidence to continue raising your score. I'm Coach Anderson. Go ahead and text next free class to 833-321-0182 and we'll reply as soon as we can with all the information, letting you know where to go to ace the ASVAC. I'll see you there.